Hello, and welcome to the latest installment of ENR TV. Now, I'd like to talk about some of the latest, the hottest topics that took place this past weekend in the world of sports. Let's first start off with some college football. Penn State, amidst all the allegations and the scandal that's taking place, everybody has a type of feeling about it. Either you want the, the, the football program to never win a football game again, or you want the poor football players that are still on the team to win a couple of games because they're falsely being punished for what happened at the school. Now, in saying this, the first two games that they played, game one against Ohio and game two this past weekend against Virginia, they played very valiantly, played with a lot of passion, and played with a lot of heart. It's not something that you'd expect to see out of a team, especially amidst the scale that has taken place. And it was a heartbreaker that they lost this past weekend in Virginia, in which it was a last-second field goal. And what's ironic is that the field goal kicker that was on their team wound up transferring to Texas. Would he have made the kick? I think so. I'm sorry to say, but going on to, and with everything that is on Penn State's shoulders, it's going to be a long season for them. Now, another game I like to talk about is Louisiana Monroe at Arkansas. What in the world happened in that game? This is the vaunted number eight ranked Arkansas Razorback in the SEC Conference team hosting Louisiana Monroe. When you schedule this type of game, these are the type of games that you schedule thinking, all right, we're going to have a little night game. A game in which we can win and look good for the fans in the crowd. Monroe was having none of that. They came, they saw, and they snatched victory from the jaws of defeat in overtime as they beat the once number eight ranked Arkansas Razorbacks, who are now unranked and have fallen from the top 25 AP rankings. And they not only made their season, the University of Louisiana Monroe, they probably have probably set memories in some of the seniors' minds forever. Does this make Louisiana a, a, a ranked or a great team? No, nah, I wouldn't say that. But Arkansas, they took a hard one right on the chin. And it doesn't get any better because now you have the varsity in Alabama and the Crimson Tide coming up next. And let's switch gears now. Let's talk about the NFL. Now, in my previous episodes, I talked about, you know, the plethora of rookies that were going to start this year in the NFL, from Andrew Luck to Brandon Whedon, you had Ryan Tannehill, you had Russell Wilson, and you had Mr. Robert Griffin III, the Heisman Trophy winner from Baylor University, starting for the Washington Redskins. Going into Louisiana, playing at New Orleans in the Superdome, let me tell you something. He not only did not play like a rookie, he played like he was still at Baylor. Passing for 320 yards and two touchdowns and making it seem easy and effortless as if he's been in the league for three years. In a post-game conference, he said that not only did his teammates appreciate and, and give him compliments for what he did in the game, they said he is no longer a rookie. And what's ironic is, is that the yards that he passed for were the most yards passed for in a rookie in their debut in a win. That's the key word, win, because we all remember Cam Newton last year. He passed for 400 yards, but unfortunately, he lost that game. Could we have another Cam Newton in the making? Only time will tell, but a great start by Robert Griffin and the Washington Redskins. Now, the game of the day on Sunday had to be the 49ers of San Francisco at Green Bay. All I have to say is, watching that game, the 49ers took it back for all my old-school football fans. They took it back to Smash Mouth. First and ten, second and seven, third and four. We're going to line up, punch you in the jaw, and run the ball. And if you don't like it, take another one. And if you don't like it, take it again. And if you don't stop it, you're just going to keep taking it. And let me tell you something. They ran for over 150 yards, and they looked as if this was just old school. If you touch the ball and you're not wearing a gold and white red jersey, you will get smashed. And if we're running the ball, we're going to get four yards per carry at least. Harbaugh has the 49ers. When you think of the 49ers, you had them thinking of the finesse, the Joe Montana, the Jerry Rice turning a five-yard out into a 50-yard touchdown pass. No. Harbaugh has these dudes lining up in a three-point stance ready to punch you in your jaw to let you know what time it is. 
granted, it's the first game of the season, so you can't say the path to the Super Bowl runs through the 49ers. But what I can tell you is, by the game one and what the Green Bay Packers had to deal with, there might be a new rookie on the block. In the, there might be, I'm sorry, a new bully on the block in the San Francisco 49ers. Now, in the nightcap, we had a good game. Pittsburgh Steelers at the Denver Broncos. What makes this a good game? The first start for Peyton Manning in over a year for the Denver Broncos. Now, you just wanted to see if it was going to be the Peyton of old, zipping the ball, doing the Omaha, Omaha, white 80, thumbs up, doing all the checks at the line of scrimmage and whatnot. Was he doing that? Not as much as your basic classic Peyton Manning. But towards the end, when it was crunch, he was giving you, you know, the Omaha, Omaha, and, and all the signals. And he, he did have a good game. Over 200 yards, two touchdowns. But you can't expect it to be old Peyton Manning in one game. The guy's taking over a year or off. But what I can do is say, hey, is, is, although you may get older in age, the brain, it always stays young at heart. And for Peyton Manning, he plays the game right here. And then he plays the game with his mind. Do I? How much time does he have left? Who knows? But what I do know is it's going to be very interesting out there in Denver. They might, instead of Tebow mania, might be Manning mania. Who knows? Time will tell. That's what I, all that I want to discuss. Give my opinions on for this week on Eda TV. Thank you for watching. Have a nice night.